Senator from Georgia. Mr. President, I rise today to um, talk about my opposition to the Section 232 motion that will be voted on later today. I have utmost respect for my colleagues who are bringing this motion. I totally understand their logic and, and I respect their point of view on this and many other issues. One of the great things about this deliberative body is that we deliberate. Unfortunately, I just don't understand <clears throat> sometimes why this body continues to try to tie the hands of this president at every turn. We all know that enacting tariffs on imports is not the goal here. This president is committed to creating a more level playing field for our workers and our companies here at home to compete in an unlevel playing field that exists today in the trade world we know of today. We need to give this president and every future president, frankly, room to negotiate. The 1962 Trade Expansion Act was passed by Congress to give the executive branch the authority and flexibility to negotiate on trade. It was this authority that paved the way for negotiations on the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, GATT, which helped reduce global trade barriers. Mr. President, most of my career, I've dealt within the GATT restrictions and the GATT uh, uh, opportunities that we had to trade across borders internationally. More than anybody else in this body, I think, I have actually transacted um, products across borders internationally. And I'm very concerned that in this era of entrenchment in Congress, where we're so paralyzed that we can't even fulfill our most basic constitutional function of funding the government on time, which we've only done four times in 44 years, that in that, envir in that environment that we get the authority on trade back, that we won't be able to even hold a vote, have a debate, and we'll, we'll hamstring any administration's negotiating efforts. Mr. President, credibility in negotiating trade terms is absolutely critical. Imagine a head of state in another part of the world dealing with our head of state, knowing that before he can make any deal, he's got to wait on us in this body to act. I've been waiting three years to see this body act on health care, Mr. President. We haven't been able to find a way to even solve one of the most cri one of the most dear crises that we all know exists today. So imagine what a world would look like if we're trying to do that in the trade environment. Like me, President Trump is an outsider to this political process. He's a business guy who's seen the impact of unfair trade practices in the real world. For years, he's seen how America has often been treated unfairly when it comes to trade. Now, Mr. President, I know, and most people who have traded internationally in the last four decades, knows that these rules were written by us. We wrote these rules. It created an unlevel playing field that allowed the rest of the world to develop. But guess what? In the last 40 years, we've seen global poverty be reduced by almost two-thirds, while our poverty rate in the United States since the Great Society was signed into law has not been reduced one iota. That's partly a function of our trade practices. This president has made it a priority to restore fairness and balance to this trade imbalance with our trading partners around the world. He needs credibility and he needs flexibility in order to achieve that. Looking at what we're up against today, it's easy to see why the president is insisting on getting America a better deal. Today, Canada has a 270% tariff on U.S. milk. The EU connect, keeps a 10% tariff on American autos. Brazil bans U.S. fresh, frozen, and processed pork, pork products. China has a 15% tariff on American cars. The EU has a tariff of up to 26% on U.S. seafood. And you cannot sell fresh American potatoes in most of Mexico. Mr. President, I could do this all day. We know there's an imbalance in trade around the world. This is about making sure America is treated fairly and is in the best place to do business in the world. It's about making America more competitive and secure. It's about ensuring our economic and national security for the next 100 years. The President is taking a different approach sometimes controversial. But I believe he's a pragmatist, and I believe he only wants one thing for America, and that's results in a level playing field with the rest of the world. I believe we need to give the executive branch, just like the 1962 Act did, space to negotiate. We need to give him space to succeed for the American worker and for our American companies here at home. With that, I urge my colleagues to oppose this uh, motion, and I yield back.